Recording in progress. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Water Pollution Control Authority public hearing. Uh, tonight is Wednesday, September 15th, 2021. We have one matter in front of us, and that is to set the rate, the sewage use rate um, for next year. Um, is there a motion on the floor? Joe. I'd like to make a motion to increase the sewer user fee for the current year from 4.45 CCF to 4.60 per CCF. Customer bills will be calculated using Aquarian data usage for the period December 2020 through April 21, annualized by multiplying by 2.4. The fixed rate will remain at 150 annually, but the definition for the minimum usage level will be increased from 30 CCF to 50 CCF. There a second. I'll second. Uh, comments, questions. Is there anyone from the public Do not see anyone from the public who's joining us. I'll ask Christian and Ron if they have some qu any questions on the motion that's in front of us. Oh, Christian, you're on mute. You're on mute. How about now? Yeah, good. <laughs> Great. Um, I, I just, my one question was in terms of the minimum use and how that conversation or that uh, change was um, uh, identified as being necessary as we didn't discuss it at last month's meeting. So if any enlightenment or clarification on that uh, would be appreciated. Sure. So, um, I don't know if you, if you guys had a chance to look at the water use uh, study that uh, time bond that um, that Chris put in the or John put in the data room, but it it, it kind of gets to the concept of block usage, which which we're, we're we we kind of have in place right now, which is effectively, if you use a certain amount of capacity right now, it's up to thirty. You pay one rate, and then after that, you pay a variable rate. What other municipalities are doing are they're taking that a step. They're taking that a bit further. And they're effectively kind of steering more of the rate increases towards the larger users. So, in our conversation with the town yesterday, we, we had some conversations around grant money that may be out there that we might be able to um, access. We talked about um, uh, greater, greater resources, engineering resources being, being brought to the WPCA. And, and, and kind of as a sidebar to that conversation, we kind of get we we did we we delve a bit deeper into the usage, and we came and there, there's really, um, based on the numbers that I looked at just yesterday, it looks like something like less than five percent of our users are generating more than thirty percent of the flow, and so those are the Carrolltons, the Fairfield Universities, and and so forth, um, the rest stops. Um, some of the condominium developments, some of the office buildings. And on the other end of the spectrum, we have a lot of um, single use uh, or, or single uh, um, singles living in homes, many, many of whom are seniors who aren't using much water at all. And so we looked at if we moved that, that uh, algorithm from 30 to 50 use, um, which again is primarily those seniors in town um, as we increase rates could we afford them a bit of protection if you will and um, in from from rate increases and so so in, in then running the numbers afterwards um, it looks as though by doing that we capture another Joe what is it about maybe 2,000 or so yes about 2,000 to to 2000 folks 2000 households who who are not using much water at all and the economic 
diminution of that is only what about 150,000? 167, correct. 167? One, 167 would be the net difference. 167. So it seemed to be um, something that struck me as making quite a bit of sense as we're going forward looking at rate structures, but we're bringing it to the commission tonight as part of a motion. Thank you for that clarification. <clears throat> I said before 5%. It's actually 0.3% of the users of the sewage of the sewer system. Um, are using about 31% of the capacity. Mr. Drew, comments, questions? No, I, I, what I want to say to Joe, you did an excellent job of putting this together. Yeah, I agree. Thank, thank you, Ron. Yeah, and I'm okay with what you, what you uh, proposed. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's unanimous. Chris. One, th one thing before you uh, adjourn the public hearing, we need to set obviously the minimum rate and um, the well users as well. I don't know if they want to just, if you want to discuss the well users, those are set at, I think there's 20 of them and they're set at $250 a piece. Yeah, Chris, I think we I set the minimum rate at 150 in my motion. Okay. So it's going to say standard same, one 150. Which that, was the that's same what it was. This year, which was right. the same as this year. Okay. For the minimum use, then the well users, we would have to set a rate for um for those. So there's 20 well users um that have wells that are associated with um you know the sewer. And that's at $250. Joe, yeah. I'll make another motion. I'll make a motion to maintain the 20 current well users at the current rate of $250. Okay. I'll second it. I'll second that. I'll second all, all in favor. Qu uh, I'll turn it to the public, Mark. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there any if public you have any. comment? Yeah. I don't think we have any public. Well, okay. Yeah. okay. I see uh, one phone I don't recognize, but I think that may be John. I just so, I have one question, comment. I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> if we're increasing the uh, normal user by 5%, shouldn't we increase the well user? Yeah. We're, we're, yeah. I, we're talking that's a, a total increase of two hundred and fifty dollars. I don't think we we've had a chance to look at the the usage, so I I would be more comfortable just keeping it in place. And and we're not increasing them by five percent, Bill. Okay, whatever. That four point sixty represents a three point four percent. Just for clarification. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All in favor of the amended motion. That was seconded by Ron, unanimous. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second by Christian, all in favor? I uh, closing at 709. Okay, so moving on to um, welcome everyone to tonight's Water Pollution Control Authority September meeting. Wednesday, September 15th. The agenda has been posted. Are there any proposed changes to tonight's agenda? Seeing none, we'll proceed. As posted, first item in front of us is the approval of the August 18th, 2021 regular meeting minutes. Comments, questions? 
We've got I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as uh, submitted for the September, the August to, uh, 2021 meeting. Thank you, Christian. Second from Joe. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Terrific. Moving on to new business. We have to hear and consider a request uh, relative to 801 Post Road to connect a restaurant to the Fairfield sewer system. This is the former gas station across from what I, I understand to be the uh, Chick-fil-A that's coming in. So um, has the department had a chance to look at this? I will just yes. okay. Yes, we reviewed it. Does not appear to be anybody on from the project. Um, they were notified of it, but um, if anybody has any questions, I might be able to answer. I was Chris. Let me ask you: with both Chick Fil A and this restaurant in that same along that same line, any issues? No, no. The pipe is at about I think forty one percent full. Um, so yeah, no, there was, there's no, uh, no issues. Okay. What kind Question. of a restaurant, that, Chris? Uh, do we know? I'm, I'm sorry. What kind of a restaurant are we, are we talking about? Maybe a, a pizza place. Chick Fil A. Yeah, right. No, not the Chick Fil A. No. This one. <laughs> this one, uh, 801 is going to be a pizza place. Is it? Well, there's a pizza oh, place is. right next door, isn't there? Right, right, exactly. So. This is kind of a, a unique one. Um, they have one in Stratford as well, so they're going to um, they want to expand and, and come to Fairfield. So. That are they putting that in place of the Colonial Haircut guy? No, no. this is across the street. Oh, it is next the to old the gas station. Home on one side, on oh. Sally Benson, and uh, the pizza place on Post Road. Okay, so they're they're going to compete with Planet Pizza or whatever it is. Yeah. Right. It's a uh, yeah. The same one that's across from two roads, right, Chris? Yes. In Stratford. Yeah. In Stratford. The question I have, have uh, is, since I don't think we have a problem with the flow of, of this, as you st stated, with the 41% or whatever it is, um, I know that planning and zoning has been talking with uh, the consumers or the um, you know, Fairfield natives there about this whole situation. But from our point of view, it sounds like there's no uh, flow problem. Can we move this on or do we have to let them come back? Um, I think we, we can, you guys can vote on it. It, it would, it wouldn't, um, I don't understand your question as far as come back. What do you, what do you mean? Well, you are, are we gonna put this on the agenda for next month again, since they didn't show up for this meeting? Um, you could. I mean, if, um, if need be. We don't have what, what information Ron, are you looking for? If, the, if it fits the criteria. And Chris says it does, what else are you looking for from them? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I know they got a zoning variant, so they must be all set to go. I would think. Yeah. Yeah, no, we're strictly flow guys. <laughs> Sorry. Ron, unless you have a, a, a issue, I'll make down. your motion. <laughs> Ron, I'm sorry. You want to move it, make your motion to move it to next month. Otherwise, I'll make the motion to approve it. We'll see what, what happens. Why don't you make the motion to approve? I'll second it. <laughs> okay. I, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the proposed restaurant at 801 Post Road location. Hey, hey uh, Joe. Yeah, um, we've got somebody on the line now from uh, the engineer, I believe. Okay, I'll hold then. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry. Jim, are you there? Looks like he's trying to join, so give him a minute. Okay. Sorry. We almost got it through before he came in. <laughs> see, if he, see if he can screw it up. Chris, what's the date on the proposal? Do you have a date? I, I didn't see it. I couldn't. Um, I think it was the no, plans. If the, I'm, the dated plans. Um, hang on one second. Let me see if I can get it up. Uh, hold on. Uh, Jim will Jim will have it probably when he's. 
Yeah, I'm just trying I to get it here. Uh, the report was dated 10, uh, 9 10. That's the one we're going with, right? Yeah. Capacity letter of 9 10. Thank you. Yeah. Jim, are you there? I don't know if you can hear us. He's gone. Go ahead, Joe. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve the uh, proposed restaurant at 801 Post Road location uh, based on the plan submitted, which were dated 9 10 21. His, his engineer is on now. So. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's fine. I, I'm okay. suggesting. Right. Sorry. Is it? Yep, it's fine. I keep going? Yep, please. Yeah, sorry. Approval will remain in effect for two years from today. Uh, if the permit is not issued within this two year period, the applicant must return to the commission for reapproval. All INI fees will be due, base, due and payable based on the fee structure in effect at the time of the permit being issued. There's a second. Second from Ron, comments, questions. Mr. Bauer, are you on the on uh are you on the line? Hi, yes. Sorry about that. No, no worries. Uh we're just uh the, the motion has been put forward, it has been seconded. We're in comment question stage. Um the only uh, question I have for you is this this property has been vacant for a while. Has there been any uh engineering studies on um that how the how the uh the new um uh, building is going to hook into the sewer system i would uh, no i don't think we've actually interpreted anything like that okay. um, i don't know if we uh we can certainly camera the lines to see how everything is and uh should anything need to be replaced i think we'd be willing to replace that for sure So noted. Any other comments, questions? Chris, okay. where did the where did the um, the line for American Joe or whatever it is connect to? So did it connect on Elliott Street or did it go to the Post Road? Where did it go? It comes out to the Post Road. It does okay. Yeah. So this would come out to the Post Road as well. This one would, yes. Yep, it comes out the post road and then it goes up uh, South Fenton. Okay, thank you. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Moving on. Thank you very well, much. This might you be missed, the shortest you meeting the, you have. Uh, the motion and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. We use everything. We have nothing under old business this month. We'll go uh, update on the current projects. I'm going to suggest that um, we begin, given that we have Dennis on the line, that we begin with the projects Dennis is involved in, beginning with the Easton Turnpike pump station, there's a number of documents that have been circulated this month on the costing of that project and the status of the project and so forth. Uh, Dennis, I, we haven't had a chance to talk, but I, I think that, you know, obviously there, there's a cost overrun um, and 
we're 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 looking forward to to understanding better on on where those costs um, exceeded budget, um, but more from a a commission department point of view, we're, we're trying to get a better understanding of um, what the inter what the process needs to be going forward, so that the commission understands when there's cost overruns, and that there's um, uh, some sharing of that information with the commission. So, um, if you could walk us through that project, kind of where it, where, it, where it exceeded budget, and where we are now, and kind of the next steps on getting that um, pump station turned on would be much appreciated. Sure, sure. So, um, as you know, the force main is completed the pump both force mains are completed the pump station is scheduled to be started up i believe towards the end of october i'm sorry the or was at the beginning of october i can't we met bill and i met with kovacs i can't bill what did he say it was <clears throat> the end of september beginning of october all right yeah i misspoke so it was the beginning of october we're supposed to begin starting things up over there. So that would mean that the new station would go online in early October, and then we would decommission and remove the old station, you know, shortly thereafter. So I would say realistically by November 1st, we should be substantially complete and planting grass and things like that over there. Um, with respect to Cost overruns um, with the documentation that Chris provided. The force main project was was one hundred and thirty five thousand three hundred and eleven dollars under budget, and we had two major change orders on the pump station project. One was the PCBs and the soils, which we needed to haul away. Um, and then when we were digging, uh, it was found that the main electrical service for the guard shack actually runs through, ran right under where the pump station was supposed to go. So we need that needed to be relocated. And there was quite a bit involved in that ever source was very specific in what they wanted. And, and obviously Sacred Heart, you know, they were involved in the process, but they weren't willing to participate um, in any of those costs. The so the contingency that was carried of five hundred and thirty-five thousand, we've used two hundred and forty-one thousand of that uh, that contingency. Um, I apologize if the commission was not made aware. I normally, uh, you know, these change orders were reviewed and approved with, um, the, you know, the WPCF staff and John Marsilio. Uh, so, you know, he was involved in that, but, but, but I apologize that these weren't brought to your attention. Um, again. Let me ask you if if we we ship that soil off site at the request of Sacred Heart, was there a less expensive option? Well, yes. I I don't want to start rehashing all this, but it that's it could have been the only question I have. So it could have been reused on site. There was no reason to haul it off site. Yeah. And what was the approximate cost of of doing that? Round numbers. It was. Two hundred twenty-six thousand. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, Dennis, I don't, I, yeah, I don't want to rehash this, but if, if Sacred Heart required or was. Uh, demanding that this soil was taken off site and, and the cost was 200 and 
$26,000. What was there a, a rationale on their part as to why they would participate in or support that financially um, when we could have just used the soil on site and, and uh, saved that money? I really don't have an answer for that. Um, it was, we basically what happened was we, we had the soil tested and it was found that there was low levels of certain compounds in it, but we had Ty and Bond do the investigatory work for us and their conclusions were that it could be reused on site, but it needed to be buried at least four feet below grade. And there was a couple of other conditions. So as a courtesy, we brought, we let Sacred Heart know and, and they had a fit and said, they don't want it. They don't want anything to do with it. They want it completely gone. So. Um, I believe an executive decision was made um, to to have it hauled off site and removed from their property. And then we did sampling afterwards to prove that it was the remnants of it were, were gone. Thank you. Yeah, it was, I mean, it certainly wasn't, I, I mean, I think Chris and Bill and I, and we all felt that it could, it should have been reused on site, but it was, uh, it's <laughs> not the way that it went down. I don't know if I, am I forgetting anything, Chris? I can't, I mean, I think that pretty much captures it, right? No, I think you pretty much touched on everything. So I yeah. think, yeah, I think just the, uh, the overall, you know, feeling throughout town and being so afraid of any kind of contaminated situation led them to go and, and err on the side of caution and just get rid of it. Yeah, the right. director wanted everything put back as clean material. So no polluted material was to be put back. So, um, right. That That's a better way to put it. Yeah. And it, it was, it was considered polluted, not contaminated material just for the record. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> And the last thing we'd want in five years, Sacred Heart goes to do something and, you know, leech, leached into another area or something like that. And then they say that the town knew that there was, you know, contamination there. Yeah. I, I mean, it's personally frustrating to me that I, I spent a fair, minute, fair amount of time trying to find Sacred Heart on our top user list. And they're not on the list because they actually send most of their sewage to Bridgeport. Right. That we're now... Uh, net of their $1 million contribution, we're out of pocket $5.2 million to support their future growth. And we're taking direction on, on, uh, how we are to manage our projects. So, um, I think there's a lot of lessons learned here. And, um, and, uh, Joe and Bill and I had some pretty frank conversations with the town about the need for project management and budgets. And uh, in more accurate costing going forward, we know the hardening project is at least $3 million over budget now. And we have 60 to $80 million of projects in the pipeline. So we, we can't continue to go forward and, and, and miss the target by 20 to 30%. There's, there's just not room in, in, the, in the budget for that, in the pro forma for that. Mr. Drew, any questions, comments? I'll be quiet tonight. I don't have any questions on that, but I, <laughs> I think what, what has to be done is kind of the lessons learned on this is to come back and say, you know, uh, no surprises. And if there is a surprise, you know, how's it handled? Yeah. I, you know, I, we've been trying to stay. I agree with you when you said Sacred Heart really doesn't doesn't uh, it's not one of the big bangers like the rest stop and things like that uh, and um, it just seems to me like they're telling us what to do in managing our project yeah well, I think Chris they were supposed to come in last month now this month and they'll probably come in next month yeah they are so to I, I look at some I, more um, buildings on that site correct right so I was going to touch on it later, but I'll, I'll touch on it now. So 
they're they're coming next month. They were going to try to make this month's meeting, but they couldn't. Um, they're proposing uh, another, at least one more dorm, if not two more dorms, on the Jewish home property. Um, so that would have to. Um, I went through the data um, just for next month's meeting as well. Um, they're going to have to um, do flow monitoring again, redo it. It's um, it was last done in 2016. Um, it's not current. It would have to be updated for um, for any future development. Um, so, but they are proposing, you know, a large expansion on their property as well. So, so Chris, yep. the obvious question: the Jewish home property would that flow to Bridgeport as well as that no. that eastern campus? No, the Jewish home property goes to Fairfield. Everything else on campus goes to Bridgeport. On the east campus, and then the, the, GE, campus. the old GE property comes to us. No, the GE property goes to Fairfield as well. Yes, so the Jewish home and the in the um, GE property goes to Fairfield. Yeah, everything on that and property still, goes through that pump station. Yeah. Sorry, Bill. Everything on the GE property flows through the Eastern Turnpike pump station. Right, and I'm not as concerned with the Eastern Turnpike pump station, but again, I will bring up to the commission we have an eight-inch pipe further down that line. So I'm very concerned about additional flows from Sacred Heart without improving the line further down. I'll go on record right now. Right, That's good point. That's line, good. Chris, I'm trying to strat the old Stratfield market. Yep. Yeah. Uh, approximately how long is that eight inch line? Uh, I think it's probably about 12 to 1500 feet at least of um, maybe even longer. Um, of, of eight inch line. It reduces, there's a reduction in the line. So it goes from uh, um, 10 inch to eight inch to 12 inch. So um, that section would have to be upgraded. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'd be looking for Sacred Heart to handle all of that if they have yeah. additional flow. Yeah. I'll go on record right now. Yeah. Okay. Good discussion. Okay. What's next? Uh, uh, I can continue on with the rest of my projects. Yeah, it's funny okay. you do that. So, so uh, phase three, I met with Bill and uh, Mark from Collection System last week. And John Bodie. And John Bodie. Uh, the phase three II project is for all intensive purposes completed. Uh, they were out repairing the defective work on the manholes um, last week. I'm not certain if they finished. I have to check with Mark. I don't know, Bill, do you know if they finished? I don't think so. I think they okay. had some other difficulties. I know they were there because <laughs> they cleaned their machine. I'm just not sure if they completed everything they were supposed to. Okay. Um, and then we also went over the scope of phase four. Um, so that I could, that could be put out to bid. Uh, but just so everyone knows, phase four is, phase four is a lot of maintenance work and inspection work. It's a lot, it's, it's a lot of cleaning and inspection of all your siphons. It's cleaning and inspecting the uh, section of pipe on Stratfield Road that did not get completed the last time. Uh, and there's some work, some cleaning on the post road that has not been done, basically hitting all the problem areas where there's a heavy buildup of sediment in the pipe so that it could be inspected and evaluated. Uh, and it also includes, we're moving the repair on Black Rock Turnpike. There's a hole in the pipe, uh, which National Motor Main could not line. So we're going to uh utilize a different technology to repair that pipe and there's a couple of manholes on route 50 on eastern turnpike that have holes in the bottom where there's water just kind of bubbling up into the manhole so those are going to be capped so phase four is is a lot of that more of that type of thing not so much eye and eye removal but it's the investigatory work that will lead to additional eye eye removal It'll lead so to five, the, uh, phase five. Correct. And that would be in phase five. And so Bill, I think the plan is to bid that in the fall 
and do the work, you know, hopefully do the work this year if we, if you can. Joe. Bill, and that's coming out of your departmental budget that that I and I re the cost is covered here in the I and I. Correct, out of that four hundred thousand dollar line item. Right. Thank you. And that you've you've got it covered, you think? Yes. He, Dennis just outlined. Yeah, covered. we've done that every year right. out of that line item uh, each phase, right. and that's the continuation of this program. Just wanted to verify. Okay. Thank you. Um, is that it, Dennis? I'm sorry. Yes, that's it for for my projects. Um, I I will just say that the you know for the Easton project, the the total project cost. I guess I never really, Joe. I never really. Was I wasn't involved in the bonding. So whether 5.244, 459.20, or 6.244, 459.20 was bonded, I'm not really certain. Uh, but yeah, honestly, Dennis, six, the, six point two million was bonded, and they took the million, and and this this was done either by the board of finance or the town finance department, as versus okay. the five point two, which was I I was expecting to be bonded, and the million dollars from Sacred Heart is that delta. We now have that million dollars of Sacred Heart in a line item that we haven't spent. Okay. Well, and just and we bonded six point two million, which we didn't need to. But... Right. So out of the six point two million, five hundred and thirty-five was a contingency for change order. So of the, like I stated earlier, of that five thirty-five, we've consumed two hundred and forty-one of it. So. I, I don't anticipate there being, I mean, the force main project is completed and the pump station project is close to completion. So I don't know what the final numbers are going to be, but it'll, the final project cost will be less than the 6.2. If that's so, yeah, slightly under six. So Chris, do you recall how much we've received from sacred heart thus far of the million? Um, yes, it was, uh, I believe it's 500,000 so far. First payment was 200. The last, the second payment was 300. They owe us a remaining balance upon completion of the 500. Gotcha. So the project yeah. is completed, right? No, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I would invoice them. I think it's yeah. complete. Yeah. Dennis, before you drop, let me ask you a question. Um, it's not on tonight's agenda, but it, it was, um, Chris gave us an up, uh, heads up that in the 15 Unclo Road project in in uh, town where the uh, yoga studio is in Las Vegas had had come in before for I don't know 50 some odd units. Um, it's coming back for 65 units, and the the challenge there is there's not capacity in the pipe uh, that runs down. I think that's Unclo. It goes down also uh, across the post road, yeah. right at. So instead, they kind of need to go out the back way, and uh, and tap into post road. What I'm getting to is there's a whole host of utility issues there, and based on the what what we didn't know at the relative to utilities at the Easton trunk uh, station. What should what how, how can we get a bit smarter on that particular project? So, well, they have companies that go out and locate utilities. The the main reason why this one wasn't marked out because we did send somebody out there is because it was considered a private utility and pri private utilities are not, um, I guess, documented. Uh, if you will, a GE utility. Yeah, it was, uh, it was just a secondary service, um, for the, for the guard shack. So having said that, um, when I say utility companies, I mean, there are companies with ground penetrating radar type equipment that will, you know, actually locate the utilities depths and sizes and things like that. 
you know, rather than just relying on information that resides in town hall or at Eversource or something like that. But to be quite honest, that's extremely expensive. Um, and one thing that we do is sometimes we'll we'll hire a contractor to dig test pits before we even design anything. I mean, it's another another route to go. So I mean, it's just that combined with now you guys want to sample soils every time you put a shovel in the ground. So your preliminary work is going to get quite expensive, you know, but you'll save it on the back end. I guess you'll know what your costs are going to be. Okay. Yeah, utilities is, I mean, short of digging a hole or using ground penetrating radar, you know, those are the two main things that I've seen. I don't know if, if anyone has seen anything else. I don't know, Chris or Bill, I don't know if you've seen any other technology. No, I haven't. I just think that no one predicted that that line from, from the guard shack would take that um, cross country route to the guard shack. And yeah, through the woods and up the hill. Yeah, we would have never known. We would have held the, the curb line, whether we're building the road, they would have did it, but. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't know any of this until they did the call before you dig for it. So once it was, once the call before you dig was marked out by the utilities, that's when they determined that there was a, a conflict. So, and I, I'm not right, even going to do it there until they, till Kovacs dug and hit it. Right. Yeah, no, call before you dig didn't even mark it out. They, they didn't yeah. know it was there. Yeah. yeah. So I guess I, I don't know if I answered your question, Mark, but. No, that was third, helpful. Uh, as as yeah. we think about what the, what the motion and the, the contingencies relative to that motion should be going forward. Um, I'm a, I'm, you know, I'm a big believer in not making the same mistake twice. So. The, um, yes. That is helpful. Very helpful. Okay, Dennis. Thanks All right, yeah, thanks, guys. Everyone. Well, just go before ahead, Dennis Chris. goes, Dennis, just before you go, uh, we had Dennis upgrade update his um, numbers on the, the pump stations. Okay. So did, did that get to the? Yeah, I posted it. It's, it's okay. on the so, site. So those are now 2021 numbers for the improvements to those pump stations. How so, were, how did you go about slating those? I noticed Fairfield beach was the first out of the box in 2023. Was there, is that the one in most need of repair or is that more based on growth in that area? No, it's uh, based on basically we assigned like a, a risk or a criticality to each station based on mechanical capabilities versus the having, I think Fairfield Beach is under capacity, meaning that the pumps aren't large enough. Um, and it's also in a flood, it's prone to flooding. Sure so yeah. we kind of sat down with Bill and his staff and kind of basically prioritized things that way, which station we all kind of put our heads together and decided which one should be done first, second, and third. Based on age and the criteria age, that, yeah. uh, Dennis just outlined, and you know it's a it's a toss up really between Fairfield Beach Road and Center Street. Right. So you know those were if you looked at the that table from 2017, Fairfield Beach should have <laughs> should have been been under construction right now. Um, so I just basically took everything to 2021 and 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 then carried it out. I just changed the the years, you know. But it's it's really hard to. I mean, I'd hate to say this right now. It's really not a good time to be doing any sort of construction project unless you really have to. Why is that? You know, the, the market is just is just crazy. In terms of expense? Yeah, in terms of expense and, you know, for example, generators are 30 to 36 weeks out. You know, you got to wait 36 weeks to get a generator if you needed one. Yeah. It's Materials just, and equipment yeah. are, are way out and contractors are... Oh, they're they're full. You know, they're they're loaded with projects. So they're just. I expect it. Really yeah, it's, it should get better next year, but right now it's not good. So, well, I, I apologize. I haven't been at a meeting in a while, but you know, we, please. We, we, if, if, yeah. Well, you know, if <laughs> anytime you need me to come, I mean, Chris just asked me. He said, "Please come to this one," and I'm here. So just, just give me a nudge and remind me, and I'll be here. Thank you, Dennis. So, 
Thank you, guys. Stay safe. Bye bye. Right, you too. Take care. Okay. So flip back to the hardening project. Okay, Chris, you want me to take that? Yeah, you want to? Yeah, I'll take it. Um, the Harding project, all the steel is done. The roads are done. Um, a lot of the earthwork is, is completed. They have to do a lot of fill work behind the um, the steel wall, and then they have to do a lot of uh, cutting of the steel wall, and then they have to do a lot of what they call whalers, where they actually weld, you know, um, horizontal pieces on pieces where they think that they can move. What usually these are over where they had a, um, where the sheets didn't go down quite as much because there's pipes underneath them, whether it's our force or outfall pipe or the uh, incoming sewer lines and, and uh, where the, uh, um, the pump stations uh, that are part of the Hardy project are going out through the steel walls and things of, things of that nature. Um, some of the corners need to be welded so that they, they don't move. And, uh, and then the final grade, you know, they have to bring it up to a final grade along where the steel um, wall is. So there's quite a bit of earthwork just around the steel wall to be done. Everything else within the, uh, the roads is completed other than the final pavement. I think they're probably looking at um, the end of October for that. Uh, where we have a meeting tomorrow, so I'm sure that will be uh, discussed there tomorrow. Bill, where did we land with the final landscape plan? Did did the town was did the town approve that fund that? Is it an open item? Uh, again, the last I heard of that was that the um, uh, fire academy had gotten a forty thousand dollar grant to do plantings, so that basically that side of uh, the uh, Harding project would be hid from Jeffrey Beach Road. Gotcha. Okay, I didn't know that. Thanks. So Bill, from a cost point of view, are we covered with the contingency now for everything you just mentioned about the, the reinforcing? That was part of the project. There were a couple added. Uh, I know, you know, I've added, I, I wanted to get a couple things done. One was <clears throat> while we have um, the roads and the areas open to go ahead and run some electrical conduits. So when we do put the fence back up and we put the gates back up, we can get electric gates rather than going back and having to re, you know, dig up and, and, and run conduits. And whether we do it now or in years in years to come, at least the conduits there, we don't have to do that at a, at a more expensive cost. So um, that's being done. And also, if you come down, you see that the road by, uh, we Denali comes up to a point and and um, they raise that hydrant there. So it's a, it's a little more dangerous, I think, to fill there because that's where we used to fill our a flusher truck and where the um, town fills their sweepers. So I had them go ahead and um, bring a hydrant in inside the plant, uh, a small hydrant, a two inch hydrant, uh, a field hydrant. So that now if we have to fill, we fill right inside that island uh, in in our property, right by a catch basin. So if anything happens, you know, it ices up or anything, it's within our property. I don't have to worry about trucks sliding into our our uh, staff or anything like that. So those are the couple things that I had done uh, uh, through my budget, through the operating budget. And uh, um, the uh, I know Laura is sweating a little bit. I think it's very close to to to. Uh, the con using all the contingencies up on everything that she has to take care of. Thank you. All right. Any other questions on the hardening? No, I just want to say that 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 project was going sideways quickly and uh, maybe sideways south quickly. And Bill and, and Joe, thank you very much for um, for for actively getting that back on track. I I listened in on one of the Thursday group calls and I have great respect for um, the teamwork that existed in getting that project back on the rails. So thank you. 
Yeah, I mean, even the town staff, Laura, did a great job too. Yeah, Laura did a yeah. Job. With, without question, if she was on the phone, I would, yeah. would absolutely. Uh, I think B, I think um, Dennis, we went over the Eastern Turnpike. I think everybody's all set with that, unless anybody has a question on it. Uh, same with C, the, the force main. Uh, that's completed. Um, actually, we've used the force main um, during the storms. Uh, we were we were uh, concerned that either the pump station was going to fail or the two pumps that are there weren't going to um, hold the flow. So we had Kovacs come in and put a temporary pump in and tie into the new one of the new force mains, and that pump did actually run and pump through the force main. Um, I'm not sure it pumped enough even to fill the force main and any push any water out, but it was there in case we needed it. And if anything happened to that station, whether one pump failed or both pumps failed, we had that as a backup. It was uh, automatic. It's set on automatic. It has its own floats. It'll start up and shut down by itself um, based on, you know, a high and low level float. So I know it pumped a few times. I don't know if it, and we tested it and it worked very well, but I'm not sure if it really ran very much. I know it ran a couple times, but not more than that. And it had an alarm on it too, in case anything happened. Also, we had an alarm float there too. Uh, East trunk interceptor sewer relocation. Um, did they start the uh, test pitch yet, Chris? Do you know? Not yet. No, that's um, time bond is waiting for an underground survey company to come in and locate some utilities. Uh, there's a couple, three areas that are in conflict um, that they're concerned with. So before they hire a driller, they want to locate this the rest of the utilities to um assure that it's safe to drill so um that will happen within the next few weeks um we've been told we've been in touch with um time bond a couple times to uh get an update the the east trunk wetlands crossing metro center uh is moving along the uh, dmb are doing a lot of the engineering they're looking for two additional borings um Bill Hurley has been going back and forth between DNB and Ty and Bond. Um, would it make more sense? Ty and Bond's already there doing test borings. Should we, so we wouldn't have to remobilize them or anything like that. So we should just look at them doing two more borings. Um, I haven't seen an answer and I, I didn't get to talk to Bill today. He wasn't in, so I don't know if that, if they come to, did they come to some sort of conclusion on that, uh, Chris? Not yet, no. No, it's still being decided. So um, the last we heard was um, DNB engineers wanted to see what the parameters were that Time Bond was going to be testing um, for, as far as environmental and geotechnical um, information. So I think they were waiting for an answer from Time Bond to get back as far as what the what they were going to test for. So um, it also might require a different drill rig because um, the depth. Um, that they would have to drill to for this project, the wetland crossing, um, might vary compared to the environmental testing that need to be done. So it, it might be two different drill rigs that might be required. So um, there's a couple of answers that we're still waiting for. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay. Uh, the, there's been no update on the uh, Riverside Drive and Siphon, I haven't seen anything or even heard anything from engineering on that. No, I talked to Laura. She said she still didn't have any update for it. So um, we're still looking at um, different things on the um, outfall pipe, trying to make a conclusion on that, on whether you know we move ahead with the, the um, borings and things of that nature. So. The microgrid Yankee Electric is, uh, they were going to either mobilize this week or next week. All of the uh, work that they needed to do um, for the trenches that needed to be done for the contaminated soil has been done by uh, Northeast uh, Construction. Uh, that's been taken back. Clean soil has been put in where they either have to put their switch gears or they have to do, dig their um, conduit runs and their duck banks. So that, uh, so Yankee should be on site. Uh, shortly doing all that work and continuing that work. And that ties into the hardening project because all of the micro work, microgrid work has to be done so that the uh, 
pump station number one for the Harding project can be hooked up electrically. Um, pump station number two is hooked up and was tested last Friday. So that's already operational. And it was uh, started up by um, fleet pump and setting their limits and stuff like that. I think we all know uh, the treatment plant, and as uh, Mark and Joe said, that we met with the administration, you know, on Monday afternoon, and they know that this is coming. And uh, I see um, Jared's on the on the line, and he he also they went over funding um, alternatives and and how we're we're going to fund it, and that's going to be looked at uh, hard in the couple in the coming months. And. Uh, Dennis touched on the uh, I and I work, the phases one, uh, two, and uh, three, and four. Um, three is just about complete. Four is is going into design, and then uh, once that's done, and uh, we do all the investigation work there, that'll lead into phase five construction. Can we? Um, I guess this is directed to John. Can you? Um... Add to this list for next month, the Tim Warren project, as I call it, I'm sure there's a internal project name that's different than that. But okay, is that's, there, that's there, on the list. It's there. Item K. I think that's next. Oh. <laughs> next one on the list. Ah, I, I, I'm stuck on <laughs> second, page one. Second yeah, page. Right. <laughs> Chris, do you want to go ahead and handle that or? Yeah, I'll, just, I'll, I'll touch on it. So, um. Bill Hurley and his staff, the engineering department, are reviewing the um, proposed plans that have been submitted. Um, he hasn't finalized them yet, but there's some questions and concerns, um, not many, that are going to be sent back to the engineer for uh, for review. Once that's finalized, reviewed, uh, we can write an RFP for it um, and get it out to bid. So um, I, I would anticipate probably a couple more weeks before they get to the final review process. Um, and then they can write the RFP. And I would anticipate probably, what are we looking at, October, probably beginning of November, maybe to get the RFP out. I did meet with Bill Hurley yesterday, and we, he had a bunch of questions that we went over. So I think I satisfied a lot of that. And, and uh, so he's moving ahead with that. Everyone, we satisfied the soil issue. He was, still, he was still looking into it, but yeah, I, I did check with our conservation director um, and, and he was pretty satisfied with it. So, yeah, but Bill Hurley was going to do some finalizing on it. So, um, I did hear from Tim Warren. Um, he, he's still, he's, he's got the um, written agreement. Um, once we get the written agreement and everything's finalized, the plans and everything, we have to send it to the town attorney to, to um, review. So. Um, that's still in the process. So. And we have a DPW as far as the paving. Did we do anything with that, Chris? Um, I did talk to John Marsilio about it. Um, his comment back was that if they have the money for it, if it's not cut from the town budget, then he would be more than happy to participate in it. If it's cut from the town budget, then there's no money. And, you know, they have streets that have to be paved, um, you know, it's, and so forth. So um that would have to be determined once the budget is finalized so that's the way we left it yeah i think john is bringing in a company to evaluate the roads correct chris yes yeah so once once they know that and the carriage drive may be one that evaluates you know that needs to be it, done now it might, so, yeah it might be in disrepair and so it could it could tie in and, and work very well just like we've got so lucky with uh eastern turnpike with the state coming through and doing the paving rather than uh, True Blue having to do it. It's a good point. Good right. point, Bill. Do the homeowners know that it's probably going to be springtime before any construction? Or... Yeah, we did mention it to them. We did tell them. Yeah, we told them that, you know, the construction season is probably going to be over by the time the RFP goes out and things like that, whether we would be looking at next spring. I mean, they could technically do the work during the winter, but you, you might not get a contractor to, you know, their, their price might be escalated. So, yeah. um, it would have to be determined. Uh, status update on the uh, treatment plant generator. Uh, as I said, the generators in place has been tested, has been load tested. 
everything's uh, okay with the uh, the generator. Uh, I think the engineer, the talent, and the contractor are all going back and forth about uh, a change order on on the size of the wire and uh, the ability to tie it into the existing switch gear. Bill, are they going to have some sort of a schedule for uh, testing the generator? Like when I was with Coke, we once a week, every Monday, we would fire it up for a while. Yeah, the exi- it's it, like it's it does. It sits right next to the uh, existing generator. That generator exercises every Tuesday morning from, depending on what season, nine to ten or ten to eleven. Um, and it's I can see it because it's right outside my office. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, that'll be tied into a uh, okay. uh, a schedule. And what we'll do is, as we do now, unless we have a storm and it exercises on itself, you, we usually uh, test them quarterly under load. So we'll we'll just flip the switch so the generator comes on like a like a uh, an outage, and then powers up. Um, the new generator I can tell you this is much quieter than the existing one. It's that oh, enclosure, wow. and uh, it, it's very quiet. My generator fires up once a month and scares the crap out of my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. I mean, it's, you know, if if someone's walking by and doesn't realize it, they're the contractors out there working, and then that thing goes off. It's it's a big diesel too, so you get the big puff of uh, black smoke and then the noise. Yeah. Same, okay, you know. Sorry to interrupt her. No, that's fine. That that goes for all three of our generators at the treatment plant and all our, our uh, pump station generators. They're all exercise once a week. Excellent. And then the, uh, the portables we do routinely. And then if a storm's coming, we get them and start them up and make sure that they're, they're, they're ready. And we have a contract that, you know, they're regularly maintained. I don't have any any um, update on Thorpe Street, Chris. To you, I was not out there. No, no update on that. Um, we haven't heard anything from them uh, since the last. Yeah. Uh, and uh, my field foreman hasn't come in and said he's seen any kind of activity, but uh, I'll check on that tomorrow. Uh, there's no update on the um, upper east trunk interceptor sewer, or um, oh the. Uh, Pipe size reduction in Stratfield Road from Woodfield Village to Owen Fish Park. Did you guys get any feedback from Rooster River there for the from this last uh, hurricane that came through? Uh, yeah, we've had several calls from residents down there. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it was we had you know uh, you know that leads into the bypass report with the had quite a few manholes overflowing there. Uh, not only the manholes from our sanitary system, even the manholes from the storm system were blown off and yeah. uh, actually uh, impacted by the Rooster River, you know, breaching its banks and coming up the road. Yeah, I, I felt sorry for a resident up there that I know. And uh, in the last hurricane, not this one, they lost the refrigerator, they said it turned it on its side, and, and same with the washer and dryer and floating up yeah. the driveway. They just, I, I know the, the, they just got a new one and it happened again. I know that the town has received several, you know, Q alert um, complaints about, you know, basements flooding and things of that nature. Yeah. Okay. So was that the bypass report? That was the bypass report. Yes, for uh, tropical storm Ida, uh, we get roughly got about five point six inches of rain. In less than 12 hours, basically, we've got, um, uh, we were staffed all night. So, uh, some staff stayed from 3 to 11. I went in at 11. I got there, you know, probably a little after 10. And uh, by 10 o'clock that night, we only had an inch of rain. By 3 o'clock that morning, we, we had over five. So, yeah. it came down, you know, in like a four, four and a half, five hour period. Um, the facility, as far as the wall, everything worked well. The only problem we had was uh, water did uh, congregate in the one area up by our, you know, switch gear uh, up by the road, like I said, where we put that hydrant uh, across from Denali in a little area. Uh, we were getting very concerned uh, that it was going to get high enough to get to the switch gear. And from from like 130, you know, it was getting high. So we kept checking and catch up by 230. It was gone. So I don't know what all of a sudden happened, but um, come to find out. If that happens again, all we have to do is we call the contractor. They'll bring a generator over to pump station number one, start one of those pumps up because those catch basins go to pump station one. 
So I don't know if something just came out of the line or something or filled pump station one and because it, it was a considerable amount of water that went down very, very quickly. And I mean, it, that was flooded, the whole uh, road, one route highway was flooded because we were gonna get our pump and pump it to the road, but it would just came right back. It would have been a circle and just come right back at us. So we we're very happy that it went down quickly. <laughs> Yeah, wonder where it went. Yeah, so, but hopefully once that pump station is powered, you know, we won't have to worry about it. And if it's not, you know, the contractor said, just call them and they'll get a generator there and power up the pumps and controls. Bill, any other updates from the department? Yeah, I, I just want to update um, the um, 15 Uncle Road project. John and I had a discussion this morning, a phone call with the attorney um, who's a new attorney on this project. Um, as you remember, they came several times last year to us. Um, the pipe is undersized crossing the post road. Yeah. Um, we approved, the WPCA approved a conceptual drawing to cross the post road. Um, right now there's an eight inch line. They're gonna propose a 10 inch line um, to come down the post road, um, go west on it, and then cross in front of the old Victoria's Secrets and tie into Reef Road. Um, they want WPCA approval um, based on the conceptual drawing that they can move forward on their project. Um, we weren't comfortable with that. They're going to come to the commission next month. Um, in the meantime, I can send out the drawings again and we can relook at it. Um, but they want to, um, they, they have additional flow monitoring that they have to do um, downstream of that line to make sure that we have adequate capacity. Because they're rerouting the pipe now, the line, um, and going in a different direction, that line was never accounted for as far as flow monitoring. We need to make sure we have adequate capacity before we approve that project. Um, so they're going to be coming to the commission next month, um, but that's my recommendation that they have to, um, you know, do this additional monitoring before we approve the project. So. Yeah, that was one of our more unusual approvals. Um, it was. Uh, a contingent approval if if they could move the line and so forth uh given what we've learned at from from the projects we have underway um digging and utilities and so forth um, are very expensive propositions i don't my personal opinion is i don't want to underwrite any of that I want the responsibility to replace the line to be fully on the on the shoulders of the of the applicant, uh, with some um, with some bonding support that if things go horribly wrong, that we have we have a backup source of funding. Uh, not being an engineer, I, I but I, I suspect that the cost of that infrastructure is going to be substantial. Would you agree? Right. Yes. So, and, and the other part to this was um, they came to us with a proposal of 36 units. They're now coming to us with a proposal of 65 units. Oh. So, um, they've basically doubled their capacity. Um, obviously, we can't handle the flow from the 36 units. Um, so, we definitely couldn't handle the flow for the 65 units. So, th this is this, in order for this project to move forward, they have to increase the line to handle the additional flow. Yeah, so it, it becomes a bit of a game that we, we give contingent approvals and they modify the plans and specs. And then I, I, I don't really want to give a contingent approval again. I want, I want some skin in the game that they're actually going to figure out what it's going to cost to do this infrastructure and invest in that plan before we give approval. That's, that's my strong belief. Mark, um, if I may, uh... I agree with you because I think what they're going to come come to us with next month is that they want to hold us to the agreement with the 35 units. And Chris and I spoke, and they're doubling the units to 65. So they may they may come and say, you know, you guys said you guys approved it already for you know. Um, um, I'm sorry. Who who was that? That was John speaking. John. Okay. John. Mark? Yes, sir. I do not remember approving this project. In fact, they were going to go back and uh, do some work locating those utilities. 
They proposed go out through Sanford, as we were talking about, but I do not remember approving this particular project. We were very concerned when we had our discussion about the other units, the 98 units. Of yeah. It, uh, yeah. What we did, what we did was we said that uh, contingent on your, your, your proof of ability to move forward, you can take this to planning and zoning. Right. Yeah. We gave them no that, approval. Yeah, we, we, we did not approve the project. There was no contingency sure. approval. Let's get to the real words. There was Nothing no approval they, they, other okay. than we gave them. So the it was a contingent path forward. We'll, I'm we'll sorry? Say. A contingent path forward. Right. I, yeah. But I, not I, approval I, of a hookup anywhere. I think there's a subtlety here. No, there was a, it, it was a conceptual drawing that they provided um you know giving them an option to connect you're right joe um the conceptual drawing was submitted and that was what was approved based on the test pits that were going to be provided there's 14 based test on pits. the tests that they were going to have to provide going under the post road right they have not fulfilled that yet they have not gotten the state dot permit to do the test pits there's 14 right. test pits that need to be done Right. So to, to make they've sure they've got to come back to us at ground zero. As far as I'm concerned, we haven't given any approval for uh, any amount of units. Right, and that's I, I just wanted to bring it up to you now, but that yeah, would not be a problem. Not know, a problem, suggestion. but it's got to come back to us. And I want to see the flow monitoring. That eight-inch line does not sound, and especially in that part of town that right. floods, I'd be very concerned, which we were, and we had that discussion, but. Where what where would that eight inch line? I know you said by Victoria's Secret. What what size line would that be going into? It would be a ten inch line that they would put in, and it would be going into a ten inch line. So okay, um, okay, th there would be no conflict with that. So um, yeah, but they've got to come back to us, and then we'll talk about costs. And, and the whole scope of the project has changed essentially. I so. agree with you, Joe. But it sounds to me like it is ground zero. You know, they got to come back as if it's back a to ground project. zero as far as I'm concerned. They've got to come back in. Yeah. I agree. So they, they'll be there next month. Excellent. I can assure you. So. Any other updates? No, any other questions about the overflows or anything like that? No. Uh, John and Jared, in the public hearing, which uh, took the span of nine minutes, an increase of 3.4% was approved, and we also increased the um, threshold at which one would fall under the uh, minimum use from 30 CCF to 50 CCF. So there will be approximately 2,000 additional households who will now move down to the minimum uh, fee of $150 a month uh, a year. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Well, before you do, I'd like to just okay. thank everybody. Um, this will be my last meeting <laughs> with the WPC a commission. I'm I've taken a position with a, a municipal in, in upstate New York to run their water and sewer division. So I, my last day will be October 15th. It's been a pleasure uh, working with all of you. Um, if you ever need anything, I'm gonna have the same cell phone. So um, mm -hmm. once I, to get settled, I'll, I'll forward my email. Um, I would love to help out in any way I can if you guys need anything at all. So don't hesitate to uh, contact me. Well, on, on behalf of certainly me and I'm sure the other commissioners, we wish you the very, very best. Absolutely. Thank you very much, all of you. Well, like I said, it's been a pleasure you're working with the last six years. And if it yes. wasn't uh, such an opportunity for me, this is uh, where I grew up. Um, so it's kind of going back home. Uh, uh, my wife and I always wanted to retire back up there. So it gives us the opportunity to, 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 you know, move up there for a few years and then roll into retirement. Hopefully. Where about, is it upstate or up New York? It's, uh, Glens Falls, New York. Uh, -huh. just, just south of Lake George, about 50 miles north of Albany. You like snow, right? Yeah, we like snow. <laughs> Well, you've always you've always been 100% committed. You've never let us down. 
I, I think back to a couple months ago, there was a, a phone call to Joe at 9 p.m. about getting some documents turned. And from 9.30 p.m. onwards, he turned those documents and got them back so that we could apply for some funding. And that's that's the type of guy you are. Yeah. And your first you guys may look at that as a, as a burden, but I love that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why that's you know, it, this job was so intriguing, you know, first to take it and then to come back to it was because of all the activity that was going on and all the construction and all these integral parts of everything that was going to go on. So I really appreciate the opportunity that uh, Fairfield has given me and, and the ability, you know, and my, like I said, it's been my pleasure to work for the last six years here. God bless you. We wish you well. All right. Good luck, Scott. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Joe. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn, Mr. Chair. Sir. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Mr. Ron Drew would second that. All in favor? Aye. And unanimous. Everyone have a good night. Yes. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night.